Hi, everybody. I'm Pastor Larry Huck, and welcome to today's broadcast. Now, if you've followed our ministry at all, if you've watched this program, if you've been with us here in Dallas, you've heard me say over and over again that in the ancient Hebrew language, there's no word for coincidence. Now, what that means simply is exactly what Jesus was saying. He said they have eyes, but they don't see what God is doing. They have ears, but they don't hear what God is saying. But blessed are you who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Number one, it's not a coincidence that you're with me today to hear about the Feast of Tabernacles. And number two, it's not a coincidence of a miracle discovery that has just happened in the nation of Israel. What does that mean? It means the latter rain, signs, wonders, and miracles, and the power of God is ready to fall on your life today. Stay tuned. Your world is about to change. There's, there's going to be, I, I promise you, there's going to be a, a, an extra special blessing and anointing that's going to come on your life for being with me on today's program. And I'll tell you why. If you're watching this, and we, of course, film this uh, a month or so in advance, tomorrow is Tiz's last chemo treatment. The last. The miracle of God will be fulfilled, and I'm going to get mama back we're going to get we're going to get nana back we're going to get my my partner back and so tissa's life right now is a walking miracle and if you're watching right now i release that miracle power that we've experienced with lion and tis i release that miracle power on you but let me couple that with this is the last week that we can celebrate the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, let, I'm going to go through the Feast of Tabernacles very, very quickly, but you need to understand because of what's just happened in the nation of Israel. The Bible says that three times a year we come before the Lord and we don't come empty-handed. This is coupled with Malachi, as you know, return to me and I'll return to you. How do we return, Lord? In your tithe, we know what a tithe is, and in your offerings. That offering is three times a year, Passover, Resurrection Sunday, Pentecost, Shavuot, and Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. Right now, we, are, we only have about, it depends when you're watching, either one day or five days left when that grace period ends and the feast, the, the windows of heaven that open up during this amazing feast closes. It's not a coincidence that you're watching right now because this is going to be, and, and I'm prophesying over my family and over yours, this is going to be the most amazing year that we have ever experienced. I, I, I declare, I prophesy, no battles, just victories in Jesus' name. Now, this is called this grace period that we only have one day or five days left is the grace period over the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, let me walk you very quickly through what we're talking about. The Bible says that these three times a year are a shadow of things to come. If you can see in the studio here, I don't know if you can pick it up, the shadow of my hand. The shadow is the same power as my hand. Peter walked by and his, he didn't lay hands on them, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. His shadow passed over. Someday we will see the rapture, we will see the second coming, and we will have the wedding supper of the Lamb. Very quickly, you can go to our website and get this. Rosh Hashanah is a shadow of the rapture. On Rosh Hashanah, God opens the book to see if our name is written. Actually, it's called the book of life, and there's three books, those who are serving God, those who are lukewarm, and those who aren't serving God. 
between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, he gives us a chance to get our lives right and to, to do something to change the world. On Yom Kippur, he seals the blessing. That's, that's a shadow of the second coming. On the Feast of Tabernacles, which we have a one or five day grace period right now, he seals that blessing. Once that blessing is sealed, no matter what the enemy throws at you or throws at us, he cannot steal the blessing of God. This is the time in which every Jew around the world, the Feast of Tabernacles would come. I, I said like, yes, uh, yesterday that we sing the song, this is the day the Lord has made. From the pool of Siloam, all the way up to the Temple Mount, figure seven, 800 yards, and past the Pool of Siloam, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Jews are coming with their offering before God, and they are singing, this is the day the Lord has made. They are so excited because they know this day, the window of heaven, this day, the window of heaven, the word window in Hebrew is the word you showed which means a funnel from the throne of God to every need we have in our family. So they're excited. They're, they're, they're singing, they're shouting. During this time, the very last day, the seventh day of Sukkot, three things take place. First off, it's the lighting or the, the, the continual lighting of four 75-foot candelabras. These are 75 feet high. Each one of them has a giant bowl or bucket, a giant full of oil. On each, on each 75 foot candelabra, there are four of them. So you got 16 giant lights shining. And what those lights represent is no matter what darkness is in your life, the light of God will push it out. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he goes to heaven and he says, you and I are the light of the world. We're to do whatever we can to bring light to those who are facing darkness. Now, let me throw a little side note in there. In these big giant bowls of lit up oil, they have wicks. The high priest would climb up or the, the secondary priest would climb up 75 feet on a ladder. The wicks were made out of on Yom Kippur, the bloodstained robes of the priests. These are called swaddling clothes. And of course, we know Jesus, who is the light of the world, he was wrapped when he was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. He was wrapped in what? Swaddling clothes. He was wrapped in the clothes, the blood-stained clothes of the priest of the, of the time of the Day of Atonement. Mary's sister, Elizabeth, her husband worked in the temple. So all of this is symbolic of the miracle power of God during this time from Jesus to you and your family. Now, the next thing they would do is called the water libation ceremony. And the high priest would go to the pool of Siloam. He would dip a golden pitcher into the living waters of the Pool of Siloam, and he would march in front of all the people with their first fruit offering with living waters coming up to the blood sacrifice. Now, we're about to go to take a break, but listen to this. The blood has been spilled. The priest is standing before the sacrifice. The sins are forgiven. In one hand, he holds up a pitcher full of wine, symbolizing the joy and the anointing of God. In the other hand, he holds up the pitcher of water. When he holds them up, hundreds of thousands of Jewish people would begin to shout, show us your hands, show us your hands. And the high priest would hold up the, the wine symbolizing the covenant blood and the water. And remember when Jesus hung on the cross and they pierced his side and out of that wound came what? Blood and water. It's not a coincidence you're watching today. Every promise from the blood of Jesus is about to be released into your life. Stay tuned. 
We'll be right back. If you haven't already had an opportunity to sow your first fruits offering this year, we encourage you to send it in now while God's window of blessing is still open during the Feast of Tabernacles. Your generous gift today will be a major blessing to Israel as we continue to fund Project Aliyah, bringing hundreds of Jewish people to Israel from around the world. Your gift will be used to provide the airfare, immigration costs, and initial living expenses to help Jewish families experience a new beginning in their homeland, Israel. With your First Fruits gift of any size today, we want to say thank you by sending you this one-of-a-kind biblical calendar for your home or office. It contains all of the important Christian and Jewish dates through December 2020, and each month displays a beautiful photo of a holy site in Israel. For those of you who can support Project Aliyah with an offering of at least $100, we also want to include this inspiring coffee table book with full color photographs and descriptions of the many notable landmarks in the Holy Land. It's a spectacular volume that matches the calendar and will be a treasured keepsake for years to come. With your First Fruits offering of $375 or more, we'll include this amazing One New Man metal art sculpture. This unique piece has been created exclusively for Larry Huck Ministries and represents your love for Israel and the fulfillment of Bible prophecy of Christians and Jews coming together. Your generous First Fruits offering today of at least $750 will fund the average cost to bring one person home to Israel. To say thank you, Pastor Larry will include this magnificent Lion of Judah Yemenite shofar. It's a high-quality 30-inch horn made in Israel that is handcrafted from an African kudu. It's embellished in silver with this stunning lion head design representing the Messiah and is bundled with all of the other resources already mentioned. Please call us today at 800-978-8546 and support one of the greatest charitable projects you could ever take part in. Our helpful operators are standing by right now to help you, so please call us at 800-978-8546. If you prefer to give online, simply go to our secure website at LarryHuck.tv and choose your level of giving there. Or you can always mail your gift of support to the ministry address on the screen. Your gift is urgently needed today as we are helping as many Jewish families as we can Aliyah back to their homeland. Please accept our sincerest thanks for whatever size gift you're able to sow. Together, we are saving Jewish lives, fulfilling biblical prophecy, and you are positioning yourself for an outpouring of blessing that God promises through your first fruits offering. We look forward to hearing from you today. Now, let's rejoin Pastor Larry. Now, I, I want to show you something here uh, and, and connect the window of heaven being opened over your life right now, the, the gifts that we're giving you, your first fruit offering and the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and you can go to our website. I did a, an illustrated sermon here at New Beginnings on the Feast of Tabernacles showing the whole thing. We have the, the uh, uh, Holy of Holies up. We have the altar up. We brought our first fruits. But let me show you this. And, and I'm just giving it to you so quickly. But let me show you this. So here's everybody. This is the day. This is the day. And, and I got to say one more time, whether you're watching this Monday or Friday or Saturday, you've got five to one days left. And then this window is closed. And I prophesy on you, this next year is going to be good measure, pressed down, shaking together, overflowing, wonderful as we stand with the nation of Israel and our Jewish brothers and sisters around the world. So here we are in the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Hundreds of thousands of people from the temple down to the Pool of Siloam and, and past. The miracle that has happened is, is they have now, after 2,000 years, uncovered that pilgrim's road. It's there. I've walked on it. I'm sure our, our, our director is showing a picture of it right now. For 2,000, why now? Why is it showing now? Could it be we're getting ready to follow the Messiah, Jesus, up that very road itself? This is not a coincidence that when all of these other miracles, these, all of these other 
prophecies, folks, are coming to pass. It's why now 2,000 years? Now, I don't know if you know how they found it. A water pipe broke. They dug and found the Pilgrim's Road. I've stood there with the people that are over that, and they said without a shadow of a doubt, 100%, this is the road Jesus walked on the day that we're talking about right now. All right, so the, the high priest goes to the Pool of Siloam. He brings the water pitcher, a golden pitcher full of living water. He comes up in onto the uh, the uh, 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 platform of sacrifice, walks up, makes a left, and he stands there. He's got one pitcher full of living water. He's got another pitcher full of wine representing the covenant promise of God, the joy of God. At this moment, to release the power of God, another priest at the east gate will blow the shofar. Now, let me say again, and I've got, I'm giving you so much. Nothing that God tells us in his word is a ritual. Everything that God tells us is for a revelation that releases the supernatural power of God. In my home, from the month of Elul to Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, I blow the shofar over Tiz, over me, over our marriage, over our finances. I go outside, blow them towards where the direction that my, uh, my children and my grandchildren live. I blow it over the church. But not only during that time, when you blow the shofar, you are announcing the coming of the king. And I'm about to get to that. But you also, at other times, blow the shofar to announce the power of God's army coming to defeat the enemy. I blow this in my house to run sickness out, to over Luke and Jen and Lion's house, to run sickness out. This is not something that we just put on a shelf. When God says lay hands on the sick, he means lay hands on the sick, which we're going to do here in Dallas on December 22nd. If God can heal Tiz and Lion, God can heal you. But watch this. So the high priest comes up. He's got the living water in one hand. He's got the, the, the wine representing the covenant power of joy and blessing in the other hand. At that moment, at the east gate, another priest blows the shofar. And when he blows the shofar, the east gate opens and in walks another priest blowing a flute. They, this priest represents the coming of the Messiah the blowing of the shofar, the coming of healing, the coming of miracles, the coming of signs and wonders. They call him the pierced one. And I, I, I've got to get through this. Video. So in he comes announcing the coming of the Messiah. So here's the high priest. The blood has been shed. The sins are forgiven. And by the way, this offering during the seven days of Sukkot, they would... Because so many people say, well, these are Jewish festivals. The Bible says, the Lord says, these are my festivals. So yes, God started them with the Jewish people. He keeps them with the Jewish people. But through Jesus, we have been grafted into them. And so during the time of Sukkot, God cares about everybody, cares about you. So there are 90, there are, not, um, excuse me, there are uh, 70 bulls that are sacrificed representing the 70 Gentile nations. There are 98 lambs that are sacrificed representing the 98 curses that are found in, in the Bible. So the blood represents number one, our sins are forgiven. Number two, our curses are broken. But God wants to bring the joy and the power of God. So the high priest lifts up his hands. Now, re, there was, and I got to tell you this real quick. Most of the time, it was Pharisees who did the, the uh, Feast of Tabernacle final day. But one time they wanted, uh, for political reasons, whatever, to keep peace. They had a Sadducee. But the Sadducee only believed in legalism. He didn't believe in blessing. Long story short, so instead of pouring the water that brought life and blessing onto the blood sacrifice, he poured it on the ground. And when he poured it on the ground, he said, no blessing this year. God wants to not only get us to heaven, 
He wants to break every curse. He wants to release every blessing into our life. So from that time on, the people who couldn't see the high priest from the temple all the way down to the pool of Siloam and back, they would begin to shout, show us your hands, show us your hands. And the high priest would lift up his hands with one pitcher of water, one pitcher of wine. And then he would lift them up to show and he would pour the, the water and the wine. Remember, when they pierced Jesus, out of his side came blood and water. This is symbolic. Someday that'll be forever, but it's symbolic of God's joy and blessing and life in every area of your life today. He'd pour it out. Now, there were those that could see, but there are those who couldn't see. And so they would begin to shout, is it finished? Is it finished? And the high priest would show the empty pictures, set them down, lift up his hands, and guess what he shouted? It is finished. But watch this. This is so cool. Now everything, the, the sins are forgiven. The, the blessing is released. The curses are broken. The, the windows of heaven are open. But those who could see, those who had eyes to see, their blessing wasn't sealed until they turned to those who couldn't see and carried the message. It is finished. That's what you and I are doing. We are going into all the world and carrying the message. It is finished. When you bless Israel, God says, I will bless you. I am so, I am excited beyond words that Probably the next time we film, or at least the one after that, Tiz will be sitting right back there in that seat. Why? Because the blood of Jesus cries out, it's finished. And we always reap what we sow. When we save someone's life, when you send this first fruit offering, it's not going in to buy something here. It's going to help save lives around the world to fulfill the prophet Isaiah's words. Not only will they come to the nation of Israel, but it will be Gentiles whose eyes are open and they will bring them in their arms and on their shoulders. If we fulfill God's word, don't you know that he will fulfill his word in us beyond anything we've ever imagined? Stay tuned. I wanna pray with you before we go. If you haven't already had an opportunity to sow your first fruits offering this year, we encourage you to send it in now while God's window of blessing is still open during the Feast of Tabernacles. Your generous gift today will be a major blessing to Israel as we continue to fund Project Aliyah, bringing hundreds of Jewish people to Israel from around the world. Your gift will be used to provide the airfare, immigration costs, and initial living expenses to help Jewish families experience a new beginning in their homeland, Israel. With your first fruits gift of any size today, we want to say thank you by sending you this one of a kind biblical calendar for your home or office. It contains all of the important Christian and Jewish dates through December 2020, and each month displays a beautiful photo of a holy site in Israel. For those of you who can support Project Aliyah with an offering of at least $100, we also want to include this inspiring coffee table book with full color photographs and descriptions of the many notable landmarks in the Holy Land. It's a spectacular volume that matches the calendar and will be a treasured keepsake for years to come. With your first fruits offering of $375 or more, we'll include this amazing One New Man metal art sculpture. This unique piece has been created exclusively for Larry Huck Ministries and represents your love for Israel and the fulfillment of Bible prophecy of Christians and Jews coming together. Your generous first fruits offering today of at least $750 will fund the average cost to bring one person home to Israel. To say thank you, Pastor Larry will include this magnificent Lion of Judah Yemenite shofar. It's a high quality 30 inch horn made in Israel that is handcrafted from an African kudu. It's embellished in silver with this stunning lion head design representing the Messiah and is bundled with all of the other resources already mentioned. 
please call us today at 800-978-8546 and support one of the greatest charitable projects you could ever take part in. Our helpful operators are standing by right now to help you. So please call us at 800-978-8546. If you prefer to give online, simply go to our secure website at LarryHuck.tv and choose your level of giving there. Or you can always mail your gift of support to the ministry address on the screen. Your gift is urgently needed today as we are helping as many Jewish families as we can Aliyah back to their homeland. Please accept our sincerest thanks for whatever size gift you're able to sow. Together, we are saving Jewish lives, fulfilling biblical prophecy, and you are positioning yourself for an outpouring of blessing that God promises through your first fruits offering. We look forward to hearing from you today. Now, let's rejoin Pastor Larry. You know, the Bible says that we overcome the devil. We overcome sickness. We overcome cancer. We overcome failure by two things, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The blood of the lamb is God's part of the covenant. The word of our testimony is saying, look what God has done for me. When you bless Israel, God will, God will bless you. I know that by the stripes of Jesus, Tiz was healed. But I also know that I could come boldly before the throne of God because of God's grace and also because God said, no man can mock him. Whatever we sow, we're going to reap. Lion's life has been saved. Tiz's life has been saved because of the blood of Jesus, but also because not only would God do what he said he'd do, but we did what we said we would do. When we bless Israel, I, there's not, there are not words to say how much I so appreciate what God has done for my family. But I declare to you in the name of Jesus, he wants to do that same miracle for you. When we save lives, God will be no man's debtor. He will save ours. On December 22nd, I want to lay hands on you if you want to come to Dallas. If you come to Dallas and you need a miracle of healing, I'm not the healer, but I can come and agree with you because I've seen God do the miracle. I want God to do a miracle for you. But even if you can't come, Father, do that miracle right now. Father, I bind the spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the spirit of sickness. Father, we overcome the devil in every area by the blood. We know the seven places Jesus shed his blood, but we also overcome it by the word of our testimony that you are no respecters of persons. What you've done for Lion, what you've done for Tiz, I release that anointing on you in your home, in the hospital, at work, wherever it is. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be so thankful in it. I'm Pastor Larry, I love you. Tiz sends her love, keep praying for her. She'll be back real soon. Your best is yet to come.